Hi, this is Dr. John Bergdorf. In this video, we're going to explore adding and subtracting radical expressions. Now, this particular section in your book contains a great number of examples and topics that we are not going to worry about at this point in the course. There are so many of them that I'm actually not going to have you read the ebook for this section or look at the PowerPoint. There is just too much that would that I would need to tell you to skip. So we are going to introduce the ideas that we need to know in this video and then following this video there's a couple other videos with some nice examples that are worthwhile too. The most important definition that we need to focus on in this section is the idea of like radicals. Like radicals have the same index and the same radicand. Now you'll remember the word radicand from previous uh, sections. That's the quantity underneath the radical. The index refers to the type of root, whether it's a square root, a cube root, a fourth root, etc. And as you know, in this course, we're really focusing our attention on square roots, but I'll give you a quick example to show you what I mean by this. So here is an expression that I'd say I'd like to add or subtract these expressions just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So by index, we mean the type of radical. Now, we are focusing our attention on square roots, which is what the first two terms. If you have an extra little number written as part of the radical symbol like this, that is the index of the radical. And if that's a three, for example, that represents a cube root, a worthy topic, but one that we're not going to be looking at right now. Basically, we would say that none of these terms are like terms. Not all the indices are the same, and the radicands, the quantities under the radicals, are all different as well. Now, what we're going to find out in a minute is that if your terms have unlike radicals, they cannot be combined. Only terms with radical terms, with like radicals, can be combined. Let's look at another example <clears throat> before we go too far. And let's stick with square roots because that's what we're going to be looking at. For a principal square root of AB, 3B, principal square root of AB. Now notice that these two radicals uh, do have the same index. They're both square roots and they both have the same radicands. So technically speaking, the radicals are like radicals, but there's still a problem here in that the other variable factors are in, within the two terms are different. This has a factor of an A, this has a factor of a B. The radicals are like, but the terms are still not like because of the difference of the variables, so these terms cannot be combined either. Now, lest you get too discouraged, there are indeed terms that have like radicals, and in those cases you can combine the radicals. Let's see that happen. Now, at first glance, when you look at this example, you'll say, well, gee, you're just fooling me again. These are not like radicals. Yes, the indices are all the same. They're all square roots, but the radicands are all different. However, what we might be able to do is draw on a lesson from previously and see if any of these radicals will simplify. Remember, if we can factor the radicand into a perfect square and a leftover, there might be some way to simplify this. Let's look at these. So the 3 clearly does not factor into a perfect square and a leftover, but look at the 27. 27 is 9 times 3, and also the 48, while we're at it, it factors 2 as a perfect square and a leftover, 16 times 3. And what we've already seen, and if this is a, a, a step at this point, if you've done this often enough that you feel comfortable doing so, you might could skip the next couple steps. The product rule for radicals says that I can split these products up into the product of two separate radicals, like that. 
And then the principal square root of 9 and the principal square root of 16, those being perfect squares, they'll simplify. Negative 8 square root of 3 plus 6. Principal square root of 9 is 3. Principal square root of 16 is 4. Following through with this one multiplication that is right there, negative 8 square root of 3 plus 18 square root of 3, should say principal square root of 3, plus 4 times the principal square root of 3. Now look at where we are. All of these radicals do indeed have the same radicand, and they are all square roots. So we can now combine these, much like we combine like terms in other settings. Negative 8 times the principal square root of 3 plus 18, principal square root of 3, plus 4 times the principal square root of 3. Negative 8 plus 18 is 10, plus 4 gives me 14 times the principal square root of 3, and sure enough, that does simplify because I have like radical expressions. Fantastic. Here's another one where you can do the same sort of thing. Notice that there are variables under the radicals. That's okay. Uh, they happen to be perfect squares, so that when we factor these radicands, we'll include the m squared as part of our perfect square. Let's look at this. So you'll see some of the same numbers, in fact. Uh, Factoring the 27m squared, 9's a perfect square, m squared's a perfect square, and that'd be multiplied by a 3, and 75, mm-hmm, 75 is 25, we'll leave the m squared as part of the perfect square, times 3, really nice there, and finally the 12, that can be factored as 4m squared times 3. I think you can see we're going to end up with like radicals when we're all said and done. Uh, perhaps we feel comfortable skipping a step here. Let's do that. So the, um, the principal square root of this product can be uh, uh, written as the product of the principal square roots. Now, the principal square root of 9m squared would be 3m but I'd still have that principal square root of 3. 25m squared is a perfect square. The perfect square root of that would give me, the principal square root of that would give me 5m, principal square root of 3. And finally, the principal square root of 4m squared, that would give me 2m, again, times the principal square root of 3. I have... Well, I guess I could call this 9m, principal square root of 3, minus 5m, principal square root of 3, minus 2m, principal square root of 3. Now, not only are, do we have like radicals, but because the variable is the same in all three terms, these can be combined. 9 minus 5 is 4, minus 2 would give me 2m, principal square root of 3. So that does simplify by combining like radical terms. Let's look at one more and just kind of pull out all the stops and throw in some fractions and other wonderful things like that. So this will give us a chance to review a number of things. Uh, not only should we simplify that radical, but we remember that we need to rationalize denominators uh, because we're not allowed to have a fraction under a uh, square root. So let's look at all of those issues. First of all, with the 24, I can factor 24 into a perfect square and a leftover. Uh, 4 times 6 would do it. 4 times 6 is 24. 4 is a perfect square. Just leave the 6. Let's use the quotient rule to rewrite the principal square root of 2 thirds as the principal square root of 2 over the principal square root of 3. And then remembering about rationalizing denominators that the trick is multiply numerator and denominator by simply a repeat of the denominator. And then we'll see where that takes us. One step farther, the, since the 4 is a perfect square, we can write the principal square root of 4 as 2 
2 square root of 6 over 6. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, um, principal square root of 2 times principal square root of 3 by the product rule, those can be combined into the principal square root of 6. The denominator, again, I'm going to skip a step here. 3 times 3 is 9. Uh, 9 is a perfect square, so the principal square root of 9 would give me a 3. And notice that I am going to have like radical terms. Before I try to do anything else, though, it might be wise to simplify the fraction in the first term. 2 divides into 6 3 times. So what I will have is the square root of 6, principal square root of 6 over 3, minus the principal square root of 6 over 3. Oh, guess what? Uh, those are the same, so uh, subtract the same quantity from itself, and you just get 0. You might say all that work for nothing. Anyway, I hope that will give you some nice examples you can build on to add and subtract rational expressions.